Greetings friend, I will show you an amazing trick that computer solvers overlook, but you can use it to easily solve extreme Sudokus like this. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go, and with that it's solving time. So you want to first see how far you can get before getting stuck. So let's start with the ones and work our way up. Only one one here, we cannot make any marks or solves, so you can move on to the twos. Same thing. Uh, no marks or solves with the twos. There are no given threes, so we have to move on to the fours. You can see quickly with these two fours, and this four is only one place for four in block one, so we can solve that. And then with this four cutting across row nine, this four coming down, column six, there's only two places for a four in block eight. So I'll mark that with snare notation, and these fours act as a pointing pair since they're in the same block force can't be anywhere else outside the block in that row. Otherwise, you squeeze out a four in block eight. And so what that means now is with these fours right here, pointing pair of fours in this four, there's only one place you can put a four in block seven. And then with these fours and the four in row four, Snyder fours in block six. I want to thank Pretzel for this amazing puzzle. This is another one of the new setters that I've never featured in Smart Hobbies before. And I've been doing one each Friday this month. My computer solver rated this puzzle extreme. It used several forcing chains, brute force steps, advanced strategies, alter inference chains just to solve it. But I'm going to show you a secret trick that bypasses all of that and will make this extreme Sudoku much easier. Let's continue on with the fives. Okay, with these two fives and this five, you can solve for a five in block nine. And then with these two fives and this fives, solve for a five in block seven. And then with these fives and this five, you have Snyder fives in block two. And with these fives, Snyder fives in block five. Moving on to the sixes. Now, if you double click in Sudoku pad, it'll highlight where all the digits are. One place for six and block four is right there. And then with these sixes, Snyder sixes in block two, and in block nine with these two sixes and this six, you can mark right there, a little bit of restriction. Move on to the sevens, and you can see we can make a few solves as we're going here with these sevens and this seven. Solve for seven in block six, and with these two sevens, we have Snyder seven now in block seven. Move on to the eight. So you might think this is kind of an easy puzzle because we've been making progress throughout. Snyder 8's right there, Snyder 8's right there, with these 8's, uh, with these 8's right here, and this 8, you can solve for an 8 in block 7, and now with those two 8's and these two 8's, solve for the 8 right there, displacing the Snyder 6. Okay, and then with the 9's, all three of these 9's look in block 1, so you can solve this cell for a 9, put Snyder 9's in block 7, and then we got uh, no other marks for the nine. So bonus tip, you want to go back through. We made a few solves. Can we make any more marks or solves based on that? Well, with the one now, you can actually put Snyder ones here in block nine. There's only two possibilities there. And then because we solved that six, you can put Snyder sixes here in block eight. And that is it. You need very advanced strategies to move on unless you know the trick I'm about to show you. And before I show you that trick, I want to hear from you. What did you do at this point in the puzzle? Please, please, please drop it in the comments. You know, did you try a single candidate strategy, some buy value sells? Uh, hopefully you didn't give up. What did you do? Share with me and the other viewers. I want to grow the best Sudoku community on YouTube. It starts with your feedback. So at this point, what you have to notice is something that was telegraphed at the very beginning. You notice that these are all given digits. The only thing you have in this block is a one, two, or three. And now that you made these solves, you'll notice that this can only be a one, two, or three in block one. Look here in block four. What is the possibility here? It's also a one, two, or a three. Okay, so we have three blocks, all have one, two, three, the only possibilities. Can we find another block that is similar to that and kind of sees these other two. 
Yes, you want to look right here in block six. And this is, might be a little trickier to find. You have a five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to one, two, three, four, nine. And because of that nine, that can't be a nine. And these can't be fours because of the fours right here. And this can't be a four or a nine. So what you notice is we have a one, two, three here. We have a one, two, three here. But then we have a one, two, three, nine right there. So it's almost four perfect sets of triples. One, two, three, except there's this nine right there. Okay, other thing you wanna notice, you have four blocks and they're kind of in a rectangle and each of these triples are in a different row, different column in the block. So this digit is in row one, but column two. This one's in row two, column one. This one's in row three, column three. So in each block, these cells are in different rows, different columns. That's very important for what I'm about to show you. So you have to ask yourself this question, what would happen if this wasn't a nine and you just had the one, twos, and threes? Would that be allowed in this puzzle? And the way to verify that is to give different colors to these three digits. So I'm gonna do blue, purple, and yellow. We don't know which one of these is a one, which one's a two, which one's a three, but we know that since these blocks see each other, we can figure out what the color scheme would need to be. And so if we come across here, this couldn't be a yellow, this could be a purple or a blue. So let's pick a purple. If we did that, then it would see these, this blue and purple. So this would be a yellow and this would have to be your blue. And you have to make another choice here. This can't be purple, so it could be blue or yellow. Let's just make it blue. And then you see now with these two seeing each other, that is a purple, and then this would have to be the yellow. And then if you look over here in this third block, or actually block three, you'll see that with this yellow and this purple, this cell would have to be blue, right? It can't be whatever this value is, it can't be what that value is. However, this cell right here would also have to be blue. You'd have to have two of the same digit in block three. Well, that can't happen. We know in Sudoku, each three by three block can only have one of a digit. So that would break the puzzle. And you might think, well, Timberlake, you just picked the wrong color right here. So don't do a blue, but blue, do a yellow. What would happen there? That's purple. And then that would have to be a blue to finish that block. And then you're gonna run into the same problem. This is gonna be purple. And then because this is blue and this is yellow, this is gonna be purple as well. And then you might think, okay, Timberlake, you picked that one wrong. That's got to be blue. And I encourage you, do this as many times as you need to to convince yourself, you know, this could be purple or yellow, that no matter how often you do it, you're always going to end up with a problem in the fourth block. So now this is blue and purple. That has to be yellow, but this is also blue and purple, that had to be yellow. It doesn't matter. And so when you have these triples, three different, uh, they're each in different row, different column, and the four blocks in this pattern, what you'll notice is that the, the puzzle will not solve. It, can't, it will not solve with just three digits. So you have to introduce another digit for the puzzle to solve. This is called a tri-value autogon, also known as a tritagon, also uh, known as a chromatic pattern when you put in all the different colors like I just did. And this is huge. Now, as a human, you can look at this and go, I got to break this tritagon pattern. The only way I can do that is by making this a nine. And so, you know, that has to be a nine. It's just beautiful stuff. I love how Pretzel put this into this puzzle. And I've covered tri-value autogons before, most recently in my World's Hardest Sudoku series that I featured last month. But you can learn more about all the different trigons in this tutorial. And now we want to see, after putting this nine in, what does this do for our puzzle? With these two nines, this now has to be a nine displaced in that Snyder one. Okay? And then with this nine, you can see we're going to displace that Snyder and solve this cell now for a one. And then with these two nines, you can solve this cell for a nine. Uh, that's got to be the nine. That's going to be a nine right there. I might have said that was a one. I didn't mean it. 
And then with these nines, you can solve for a nine here in block five, displacing that Snyder eight, which can allow you to displace this Snyder eight. And then we're able to make a few solves. I love gobbling up all these marks I made. The more you clean up the clutter, the closer you are to getting the puzzle solved. To finish up block nine, we need a two or a three right there. So where does that put a seven in this row? Can't be here. It's gotta be right there. So you can solve that for a seven. And then you might notice that along row seven, where can the one and two go? Because of these one and two right here, this is actually a one, two hidden pair, which makes this a nice three, four naked pair. And so now you can solve this cell because it can't be a one or two, can't be a four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. This has to be a three, which is gonna make a nice six, seven naked pair right there. Awesome. And then you wanna clean up some of these marks and clean up the threes from right there with this one you can clean up the one from right there. That's going to be important because look across row one now. Where can a one go? Can't be here because of this one. And it can't be here because of this one. This is the only place to put a one. So you can solve that for a one up there in block one. And now we can finish the rest of block one because that has to be a two. That's got to be a three. This is going to be a one. This has to be your two. That's the one which makes this a three and makes this a two. Beautiful. We're making so much progress here. And now with this one, you can move these ones, you can move these nines, and you'll see that you have a one, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we need a two, three, four across row five. Well, four can't be here because of this four, and it can't be here because of this four. This has to be your four now. So we can remove that as a four, and then with this two, you can remove this as a two. And you can see with the three in the row, you can move that as a three. And so the ones are now a pointing pair. They have to be somewhere in block six. They're limited to column seven. So that means this can't be a one or you have no place to put the one down here. And once you remove that one with this two, three, this has to be your one now looking good. Okay, where do we go from here? Well, you know, this is gonna be a two, three to finish row five. You got a two, three here. You got a two, three right there. All right. And let's see how much further we can go. So what you might notice is now, this can only be a three or a six. Since that's the only thing that can be in row three there, that bumps the three out of this cell. So that's gotta be your two, that's gotta be your three. That's gotta be a two, that's gotta be a three. And we got a nice three in the corner, boom, boom, boom. Kind of missed that, but you see some snowflakes coming out because it's December. That's gonna be your two, that's gonna be your one, that's gonna be your three, looking good. That's gotta be a two, clean up some more of these marks. With this two, that's gotta be a three now. Disambiguate the six, three right there. Nice, and now you can disambiguate the seven, six right there. With this three, clean up that four, three in block eight. We clean up all of block eight, love it. Now what can we do? Well, look at these twos and this two. You can solve for a two right there. Displacing that Snyder five, we can solve that cell for a five now. And we only have two cells remaining. We got a one, we got a seven. I see the one right here, pull it on up. There's your one there, just seven. You know, and that'll get you some quick solves. I don't see a seven in this otherwise full house. So that's gotta be your seven right there. And we just have three digits remaining. One of them's gotta be a one. So I'll look and see there's two ones right there. One's gotta be a four, I got my four right there. And then our last digit is a six. Now challenge yourself to spot the Otagon in this next puzzle. Thank you so much for watching.